Hi, my name is Sasha and I've recently become pretty interested in material science. So what is that exactly? Basically, you're looking at different properties of different materials and seeing how you can manipulate things like the chemical structure to get the exact properties that you want. When you're talking about material science, there are three main things that you need to know. Polymers, ceramics, and metals. These are the three broad categories that any material is going to fall into. Today, I will be talking about polymers and specifically PBAX foam. PBAX foam is also known as Zumex foam and was originally designed for aerospace applications, which I think is pretty cool. This is what a PBAX foam molecule looks like. This probably doesn't mean that much to you, but that's okay, I'll explain later. First thing you need to know about polymers is that they consist of repeating subunits, which are called monomers. So basically, one molecule repeating over and over and over again in a long chain. You can think of it like beads in a necklace. There are four main types of polymers classified by their structures. So there's linear, branch chain, network, and cross-link polymers. PVAX uses a cross-link polymer because it has like a brick-like structure and it's also quite strong, but not too, too dense because it has these gaps here, as you can see. This is the chemical formula for PVAX foam. As you can tell, it's a little complex, but I'm going to break it down for you. First thing you need to know is that PVAX uses a blo uses block copolymer technology. This basically means that it combines a polyamide and a polyether, which allows it to have some pretty interesting properties. So PA, which means polyamide, goes in here. And the thing about polyamides is that they're hard and durable. PE, or polyether, goes in here. And this one is more soft, flexible, and elastic. So when you think about it, if you combine these two things, you get a durable but bouncy foam. That's exactly what we want. So how does this work? Why are polyamides harder? Why are polyethers softer? This is due to the intermolecular forces. In order to get you to understand that, I'm going to have to explain what a dipole is. It's basically when one side of the molecule is more negatively charged than the other. So in this case, we have water. Oxygen is quite electronegative, meaning it really wants its electrons. So the electrons are attracted to the oxygen. And since it's bent like that, they're not distributed evenly, creating a negative charge. If you look at this classic bohr rutherford diagram that you might draw while sitting in chem class, you see that they're very evenly spread around, right? You have, there's no like, they're all even. But in the real world, because the orbits are very strange, as you'll find out when somebody finally tells you this, the Electrons can temporarily end up clustered like this, creating a negative charge on one side of the molecule and a positive charge on the other side, as opposed to our nice, neat thing. This creates what's known as London forces. It's basically a temporary dipole that forms on the molecule and affects how it interacts with other molecules. That is the first of the intermolecular bonds, London forces. The second one is a little bit stronger and is called dipole-dipole bonds. Basically, you have a dipole molecule that bonds to another dipole molecule because of the negative and positive charges on it. The third and strongest of the intermolecular bonds is the hydrogen bonds. And this is when hydrogen bonds to fluorine, nitrogen, or oxygen. These three atoms are all very electronegative, which means that they hold on and pull electrons a lot. So this creates the strong bonds. So now, if we look at a polyether, we don't see any hydrogen bonds. That means it only has the two weaker bonds, which explains why it is softer, more flexible, and more elastic. If we compare that to a polyamide, on the other hand, we see hydrogen bonds all over the place, and that's exactly why it's harder and more durable. So, how does foam work? Foam is basically made up of a bunch of little bubbles. And as we mentioned before, PVAX uses cross-linked polymers, so basically each of these little gaps here is going to be a bubble. And if we pretend that those gaps is a balloon, you can imagine that you push a marker down on the balloon, and then you let go, it's going to go flying. That's exactly what happens with foam. You push down on the shoe and then you go flying. Now, PVAX has a very high energy return, 85%. So basically, if you put down 100 joules of force, it's going to return 85 of those. Most shoes can only return 50 to 60%. So why is PVAX great other than the energy return? Well, two other common foams in the space are EVA and TPU. EVA foam gets compacted pretty quickly and therefore doesn't last that long. And then TPU foam does not work well in the cold. To summarize, PVAX foam uses block copolymer technology, which allows it to combine a polyamide and a polyether. And that gives it some really interesting properties, allowing it to be lightweight, durable, and have a high energy return, which is, makes it great to apply in things like the alpha fly and dragonfly. I hope that was interesting to you. I hope you understood.
Thanks for watching and have a fabulous rest of your day.